um, joined with me, and I'm going to start from my far right, your left, by Lieutenant uh, Danny Fisher, uh, Reverend Hugh Marriott from Allen Memorial Temple. Allen Temple. Allen Temple. AME. AME Zion Church in Mount Vernon. <clears throat> to my immediate left, your right, uh, Deputy Commissioner Sean Harris, uh, Captain Adonaro, Ed Adonaro, Lieutenant Steve Sexton, and Commissioner Ronald Fatigate. Today was uh, a tragic situation that unfolded on a day where families were coming together to rejoice to celebrate a new year. And it happens that a young woman has fallen tragedy to, has fallen victim to another act of senseless violence in our streets. Earlier today, um, we spent some time at the hospital with the family of the now deceased, a young girl who I'll talk about in a moment. But for now, I want to introduce Captain Adonaro to provide the facts around the situation at hand. Captain. Uh, shortly before 2.30 this afternoon, police units were called to the area of 300, the 300 block of East 3rd Street on a report of shots fired. The first arriving units encountered a 28-year-old city man who had sustained a gunshot wound to the arm. Upon further investigation, officers located a vehicle a short distance away. Inside, there was a 13-year-old female who suffered a uh, gunshot wound to the head. Uh, she was transported to Mount Vernon Hospital, and unfortunately, she expired therein. Uh, that would be within a half an hour or so of the incident. Uh, we have no suspect information at this time. We're asking anybody who was out there and saw anything to please call the Mount Vernon Police Department. The detective division number is 914-665-2511. The major case unit, which will be handling the investigation, can be reached at 914-668-6841. I would ask the people who do not get an answer at one number try the other number. Uh, detectives are out in the street and they're working, so they might not be able to answer the phone. And that's all I have for you. So can you explain the man who was shot was shot by the same person who shot? How, how did it go down? We don't know. You don't know if someone was in a car shooting or on foot? We do not know yet, no. No, there is a man who uh, walked in the hospital, Montefiore, uh, later on in the afternoon. Was it related to this incident? A man with a gunshot as well. Walked into Montefiore? Yes. That's what we don't know about that. The 28-year-old city man who was shot in the arm, though, what does he say to you? He must be speaking to police? Uh, we've interviewed him. He's given us no information that I haven't given you. What the, what was the vicinity again? You said 300 and the 300 block? What it was, was in the 300 block of East 3rd Street, more specifically the area of Pease Street. And no one has come forward to talk about it? Not yet, no. Not one person in the middle of the day. This is 2.30 in the afternoon. We canvassed for quite a few people. Uh, unfortunately, nobody saw anything that helps us. Some people did hear shots. And, and if you can talk to the collaboration with the MTA police and, and how they assisted. Uh, correct. Uh, and, and thank you for reminding me, Mayor. The, um, I would like to give our, our thanks to the MTA police department who provided support at the scene, uh, additional manpower, and, and much-needed assistance. So, Captain, you don't know about the 20-year-old man that walked into the Hunter Fiore at around uh, 3.06 p.m.? No, I do not. You identify the 13-year-old? Uh, Who is she? Yeah, the 13-year-old has been identified Shemoya. as Shamoya McKenzie. She's a student at Mount Vernon, Hos uh, Mount Vernon High School. I'm sorry. Graham. Graham That's Graham? I'm sorry. It's good again. It's good again. Shamoya McKenzie. Where does she go to school? Graham. Graham School. So is she an eighth grader? Yes. Graham School? Graham, Graham school? school. She's a member of the basketball team now. Can you tell us a little bit about her? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll I'll, touch upon I'll that. I'll defer on that right now. Graham School? She Correct. A-H-A-M? Correct. Yes. Thank you. Now, I'm going to ask uh, Reverend Marriott from Allen Temple AME to come forward and share some words of, of comfort 
but also to share um, his experience knowing the family. Okay. This is really not the way that we want to start the new year. We have lost a bright, beautiful, young girl who had a lot of promise and represents the best of Mount Vernon. I know her. In fact, my daughter played on the same basketball team with her. I know the coaches. I know most of the people involved with that girl and that team. And to hear something this tragic happening uh, with one of our brightest is really, really not something we wanted to have to be doing tonight. But I will say this, that despite uh, what we see out there in the world, and despite what we see around us, we are a city that is coming together, that believes that no matter what we see, we can bond together and be stronger. And so as a member of the clergy and all of my clergy brothers and sisters that are with us, we stand with the family, we stand with the city, we stand with everyone who has a heart for the future of this city. We are better than this, and I know the police department is doing all that they can in order to bring this perpetrator to justice, but this is not something we're going to stand for in our city. So we send out all of our prayers to the family, to everyone who was associated with the team, with this girl, with the family, with Shemoya and her family, and to everyone who is hurting right now who has lost a loved one. No parent should ever, under any circumstances, ever have to bury a child. So we grieve tonight, and, um, and we look forward to justice being served, but also to us getting through this, because we've seen too many tragedies and we will get through this together. Thank you. How are the parents doing? Well, as you can expect, uh, we were at the hospital today and they are, they're not doing well. Um, it still hasn't sunk in that they have lost their child. What I do know is that uh, disbelief is really where they are. And so we're gonna help them through the grieving process as best as we can. But like I said, we're all hurting because this could have easily have been any one of our children. And it really was one of our own. Thank you. And in closing, today, Mount Vernon's heart is not just heavy, but it's broken. And to know that one of our youngest aspiring scholars has succumbed to senseless gun violence is just a real tragedy. She was 13, and like every 13-year-old, she wanted a cell phone for Christmas. Her mom worked hard and got it for her. She was 13. She showed up to practice. She played on the junior varsity basketball team. She was wise beyond her years. She was 13, but still being contacted by UConn to play basketball. She was a rising star. And this is a moment where Mount Vernon really is coming together to grieve this loss, but really coming together to look how we can embrace our young people and teach them that life is gift, and we have to continue to do more to keep them safer. Our police department is working hard around the clock to bring this perpetrator to justice, but more importantly, we're working with the community to make sure that we're holding each other up during these very tough days. Tomorrow, um, there will be grief counselors available at Graham School. That's located at 521 East 5th Street in Mount Vernon. And we look forward to, um, that's going to be at 9 a.m. The doors will open at 9 a.m. I spoke with the superintendent of schools, and um, he will be there, and I'll be joining him. And it will be open to all the all the students that are having now to deal with this tragic situation of losing life at such a young age to such a violent act. And having grown up in Mount Vernon, having been through this, I know exactly what they're feeling. They're confused, they're scared, and this is why you know we're going to continue to work hard to try and build that bridge and, and strengthen that bond that keeps the community together. Tomorrow, I all I can say is to the young people that that this world is big and we don't want them to stop dreaming and achieving and know that 
Shamoya is, is, while she's not with us, her memory is going to live on as one of promise and potential. And we're going to continue to embrace the family and know that we're going to pull together and make this situation hopefully never happen again. Thank you. Uh, 914-665-2511 is the number. That's the number for the detective division. Okay. And the major case number is 914-668-6841. Six, 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 eight. Six, eight, but that both numbers suffice. Both numbers. How is the issue of the <coughs> council, your administration, and the, the police, <coughs> lack of police on the street affecting Mount Vernon? You know, that, that's, a, that's a great question. And at this time, you know, it's not a, I don't, I think we have a family that's, that's grieving the loss of a very young, promising scholar, a young lady. And it's a mother's only daughter. And what we know is that crime doesn't take a holiday. And we're going to continue to work around the clock to make Mount Vernon a safe place to live, work, and play. But, you know, my colleagues in, in government, um, all I can say is today's a day where our heart is broken. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Can you Thank just you comment guys. on the status of the other person that was shot and whether or not they've been released or will be released soon? <coughs> they were transported to an area hospital. They're expected to survive. I do not know if they've been released or not. The 28-year-old? Correct. Is this the 28-year-old shot in the hospital? Or you? Uh, we're not going to give that up. What day did you know? Couldn't tell you. But you're, she's, she's an innocent bystander. She was just in the car and someone was shooting? She's an innocent bystander. And I just hope my colleagues feel the same pain that we feel. Thank you. Thank you.